Hey everyone, I hope you're well. So, if you've played Apex Legends as long as me, you'll know there's been a ton of limited time modes over the year, but do you know all of them? Can you remember every limited time mode? And looking back, it makes me realize there's so much content waiting to be reused, and I really hope that Respawn just kind of recycle these modes, maybe on like a weekend playlist. Imagine if you could jump into like a party mode playlist, and it would just randomly select one of these game modes. It would be absolutely awesome. Awesome. I really hope they'll do something like that in the future. But with that in mind, let's jump into every single limited time mode that has ever released so far. Let's see how many you can remember. So first up, we have the very first limited time mode. It was the Elite Q mode. In this, you had to place top five and you'd get access to a special Elite Q Q. And once you're in there, if you got a win, you could make your progress towards the Elite 888 badge, which was one of the rarest badges, perhaps the rarest badge in the game. It was kind of like a precursor to ranked. This was all the way back in season one where we didn't even have a ranked mode yet. So it was testing the waters for competitive play. And basically, if you got a top five placement, you'd stay in the queue and you could build up a streak. And there's a lot of people who have super high streaks and that was actually kind of printed onto a badge that they could put on their profile. So it was a fun competitive game mode that people grinded like crazy and got some really rare badges from. The next limited time mode was solos and people seemed to really like it and you know there was a lot of hype like yeah solos in Apex finally but ever since then it's kind of disappeared and it's because actually solos just doesn't really suit Apex Legends it's a character based battle royale game and I personally do agree with that now. Originally I thought that solos would be great for the game but now I feel like to be honest duos is more than enough. I'm happy to have a dynamic duo even with a random and I can kind of handle it if it's in a 1v2 situation anyway so solos probably won't ever come back um, but either way it was kind of chaotic and crazy. There were just so many like pathfinders or caustics in the same game. It's mad. The next game to come in was Shadowfall in season three, I believe. I think it was in yeah, the start of season three, right? And Shadowfall was part of a Halloween event and it actually teased Revenant for the first time. And this is in the Shadow World that we now know in the current lore actually exists. When we go and do the quest, we go into that same Shadow World. So Shadowfall was basically this multiplayer zombies mode where some people would start as shadows that have increased movement speed, increased melee damage and increased climb height. It's sort of a tease for what Revenant's abilities would be and if you killed a legend as a shadow that legend re would respawn as a shadow. It was a great idea in concept but because people just wanted to complete challenges where they had to win as a legend as soon as they turned into the shadow they just quit the game and it really ruined the fun. Either way, I'd love to see Shadowfall come back with more incentive to play as the Shadows. I'd definitely like to see that, because uh, besides that, it was a bit of a failure. Next, we have perhaps the best game mode ever. Now I'm thinking about it, Season 3 was actually packed with content, because this came out in Season 3 too in the holiday period. This was Winter Express. Now this game mode, you'd basically all fight for control of a train, and it was just such a fun game packed game mode. Each legend would start with a different set of weapons and equipment and each day the weapons would cycle through the different legends. So you kind of have to pick and choose depending on what abilities and whether you want like a Spitfire or a Peacekeeper or something like that. It was a lot of fun, super cheery and it really did fit the holiday mood. I'd love to see it come back this holiday season too. After that we had the Grand Soiree and the Grand Soiree was filled, I'm telling you, filled with different game modes. Every two days, a new game mode was added. Now, this is something that I think should just be in the game right now as default, like this party mode, right? Every two days, you have a different game mode or you jump into a playlist and you just get put into some random limited time mode. It'll be so much fun. So let's go quickly through some of the different game modes. So there was Gold Rush Duos. This was just simple duos mode, but you got equipped with only gold weapons. Only gold weapons appeared on the floor, so this could be gold 
triple takes, gold longbows like that, and also the care package weapons like the Kraber, and at the time, the Mastiff spawned on the floor as well. It's pretty crazy, it was a lot of fun, it was basically just Kraber central, like everyone just picked up the Kraber. Next we had Live Die Live. This one was kind of interesting, it created some interesting moments, especially in the late game. Essentially, if you died, you'd automatically respawn on your teammates when the next ring closed in, and as the rings got smaller, you'd just start to see massive squads of people landing down, it was crazy, but yeah, people kind of just started to quit this game as they got bored as well, so you wouldn't really see that massive swarm of players that would come in late game. It definitely had that kind of same feel that like a jailbreak has in Warzone uh, at the moment, but yeah, it's definitely if they could do some balancing to make people actually want to stick in. I remember that as the rounds came in, you'd also get uh, different equipment, so you'd land with something so you actually had a chance to defend yourself. To begin with, it was like a P2020, but then I think it evolved to like blue armor and an R301 if I'm not wrong. So yeah, interesting game mode, not too different from the standard gameplay, but it offered a unique twist. Then we had third person mode. It basically took the third person camera mechanic that they snuck sneakily into the firing range and just put it into a normal game. It was pretty crazy. I don't think third person mode really suits Apex Legends, but it was kind of a bit of fun to finally see our characters in third person, learn more about how our movement was kind of impacted by the way we press different buttons in game. I definitely learned a lot from this and I wouldn't mind seeing it back even if it wasn't made a permanent mode. Next we had Always Be Closing. This game mode was pretty self-explanatory. You land but the ring is just always slowly closing in. So you had to always constantly move to the center of the ring because it just kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. To basically kind of encourage people to push to the center of the map and get into fights quicker. It was, yeah, it was pretty fun. Just a nice little twist. I feel like they're kind of testing and experimenting things with this one. Then we have Armed and Dangerous. Now, I remember this one actually came out in Season 2 as well after Solo's mode. I forgot about that. It also returned in the Grand Soiree event. Now, Armed and Dangerous was shotguns and snipers only and you only had level one body armor. Basically, if you could hit your shot with a sniper, you'd love this mode. If you like the Mozambique with hammer point, you'd love this mode. I had a crazy game. I had like 22 kills almost entirely with the Mozambique in this mode. So I remember that. It was a lot of fun. It's actually going to come back on Tuesday, although this time you'll start with Evo armor. So late game, the Mozambique may not have quite as much power, which is a bit of a shame, but we'll see how that goes with Evo armor. Then we had Dummy's Big Day. Dummy's Big Day was basically everybody looked like a dummy and you kind of had unique abilities that weren't in the standard game and some of these abilities actually tested different things. They tested a healing change to lifeline where you just instantly heal people in front of you. They made a change where you could just spawn loot in front of you. They also tested the current Mirage Ultimate. So they actually tested this in Dummies Big Day first and obviously people really loved it and later it got put in as a buff for Mirage in Season 5. So that's really cool to think that they actually used a game mode to do live testing on the players. We also had King's Canyon After Dark which is pretty much just King's Canyon normally but on the nighttime map. There were more digital threat scopes for both the sniper and uh, pistols and SMGs so it's kind of fun to just constantly get four to ten times scopes. It's definitely a good map for someone say like Bloodhound because yeah it's kind of a bit harder to spot people in the dark. I think the map was really great, a great design but personally I prefer the brighter atmosphere so I can actually see people and see what I'm shooting at. Recently we also had the Battle Armor limited time mode. I think every few days it change what you'd spawn with but essentially you'd spawn with a p2020 and level 1 armor a few days went by it'd be a p2020 and level 2 then level 3 then evo armor so it was testing to see whether it was worth people landing to you know start off a p2020 and actually kind of before this event i thought it would be a good idea but i learned very quickly that it just made it even harder if you didn't get a weapon off drop because Currently how it is, if you land, you have a chance to run about and get a weapon whilst everyone else is doing the same. But if everyone has a P2020, there could be bullets flying at you from any angle and you can only shoot at one person whilst you're trying to get a bit of loot. So I don't think it's a good change, but it was an interesting test. As you probably noticed, a lot of these limited time modes were tests for future content. Take the upcoming event, for example. The mobile respawn beacon in Armed and Dangerous will actually be put into the live game after the limited time mode is gone. And Evo Armor was another limited time mode and it later became 
loot, floor loot. So I think it's safe to say they love testing things with the community here, but I still would love to see more of these game modes just thrown back in there, you know? I mean, why not? I think it would definitely be fun. So how many did you guess? Let me know. I'll see you in the comments. Cheerio. Did you know I stream almost every day from 7 p.m. UK time or 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time? You can catch me live right here on YouTube, so make sure you have notifications turned on. I also have a new members program. Become a member for $2.99 a month, get your comments highlighted in videos, get a cool badge in live stream chat, get access to these cute emotes and also gain access to my members tips videos where you can ask me for any tips and I'll be making new videos weekly to help you improve your own game. Click the join button or click the link in the video description to get involved.